and welcome to Code Slicing. It's been pretty exciting in the Code Slicing studios recently since the M1 Max laptop has finally arrived. I've been getting to know it for the last couple of weeks and in this episode I'm going to answer some of the questions that I had when I was making the decision of whether or not to upgrade. I'm hoping other Xcode developers out there who are making similar decisions might find this useful. We're going to be comparing three systems today. The M1 Max, obviously, in a 16-inch MacBook Pro chassis, 32 graphics cores, 64GB of unified memory and 2TB of storage. I went all out on this one since I'll be using it for development and video editing. Next up we've got the Mac Mini from 2018 with a hexa-core chip and 32GB of RAM. This has been my workhorse for the last few years and has really served me well, although I did notice a significant performance drop when updating to Big Sur, which didn't improve with Monterey, so it's going to be interesting to see how much of that performance the M1 Max can claw back. The third Mac we're going to be looking at today is the wonderful 15-inch MacBook Pro Retina from 2015. I absolutely love this laptop and it's the one I'm going to be replacing with the M1 Max. Now, for reasons I don't have time to go into right now, that's still running Catalina with Xcode version 12.4. And you might think that's not going to lead to a fair comparison. And in many ways, you're right. It really was a sweet spot in terms of performance, so it's going to be exciting to see how it stacks up against the latest hardware and software. We're not going to be running a boatload of standard benchmarks in this episode. This is not the awesome Max Tech after all. However, we are going to be looking at several aspects of Xcode development, which will give you an informed opinion on whether or not an upgrade like this will affect your coding experience in a positive way. If you're interested, the way I obtained the numbers we're going to be looking at today after much trial and error was by externally filming the screens and counting the number of frames between events. So in the end, the results were predictable, repeatable, and therefore pretty accurate. Right, let's get down to business and start by comparing these machines from a purely hardware perspective. We can see from the Geekbench scores that the M1 Max absolutely trounces the other two in both single and multi-core scores. And that trend continues when we look at the storage access speeds. Absolutely incredible. So on paper, we know who the winner should be. Let's see how the results pan out. First up, we're going to see how long it takes these systems from cold to get to the login screen. The 2015 MacBook Pro takes 29 seconds, an eternity when all you want to do is code. The Mac Mini gets there in a much more respectable 17 seconds, and the M1 Max crosses the line at exactly the same time, which I found a little disappointing. But most of the time you're going to be waking this thing from sleep, which takes as long as it takes to open the lid, so I wouldn't worry too much. Once you're logged in, you want to get on with coding as soon as possible, so you're going to want to know how long it takes to open Xcode. For the purposes of this test, I define the state of being open to be looking at the home page where you can choose your project or do whatever it is you want to do. We're going to be looking at access time directly into a project in just a minute. I've split the results into warm and cold categories. Warm being when you're opening Xcode having previously had it open in the same session and therefore somewhat resident in memory. While the 2015 MacBook Pro running Catalina and Xcode 12.4 does pretty well taking just 4 seconds to open from cold, it only takes an incredible 1.7 seconds to open from a warm state. The Mac Mini falls well behind with a time of 7.1 seconds from cold and doing only slightly better from warm. Given the hardware improvements, you'd expect it to be faster, but this goes back to what I was saying about the decrease in performance from Big Sur onwards. Fortunately, the M1 Max improves on the 2015 MacBook Pro time, clocking in at 3.5 seconds from cold, but can't match it when it comes to opening from a warm state. So with equivalent software only, meaning the Mac Mini and the M1 Max, we've got a 50% improvement on our hands. Not too shabby. Now we're going to look at how long it takes to go directly into an Xcode project. Again, looking at the cold and warm system states here, and the 2015 MacBook Pro achieves this in 5.4 and 4.4 seconds respectively. The Mac Mini almost doubles the cold state times at 9.6 seconds and doesn't do much better warmed up. The M1 Max claws this back by posting the same time as the 2015 MacBook Pro from cold, but falls behind again from a warm state. Once we're in Xcode, something that traditionally seems to take forever when you're bashing out code is looking up the definition of things. So for this test, we're going to look up the definition of view in the SwiftUI definition file Behemoth that is 44,000 lines or so in the latest version. 
Here, the 2015 MacBook Pro running Xcode 12.4 has an advantage since the header file is only 24,000 lines, or thereabouts. So the first time you look up this definition takes nearly 3 seconds on the 2015 MacBook Pro, and in subsequent lookups, that reduces to 2 seconds flat. The Mac Mini on Xcode 13.1 takes a whopping 3.8 seconds, dropping to 2.9 seconds when warmed up. The M1 Mac storms through this test, taking just 2.1 seconds cold and only 1.7 seconds subsequently. And you can really feel this improvement, so this is one of those things that does make a difference day to day. Now we come to one of the tests that I was most interested in as someone who predominantly codes in SwiftUI, and that is how long it takes the preview to update following a change to the code. We're going to be doing this for two different types of view. In the first test, I've got a relatively complex wheel that I built from several custom shapes all using layout guides in order to demonstrate how layout guides can be interconnected when creating animated designs. If you want to know more about layout guides, I've done a whole series on them for your viewing pleasure, but the upshot is that you could consider this view to be one that has a lot of dependencies on paths and calculations within those paths. And to make it even more demanding, I've got 10 of them. I wanted to slow down the update time as much as possible and this seemed to do the trick. I'm testing two types of changes here. First, I'm testing a change by commenting out this Z stack at the top to remove the spokes. This is a rather demanding change since it requires the SwiftUI framework to recalculate the view hierarchy. The second type of change I'm making is an inline one where I'm changing the value of something within an existing view hierarchy. In this case, the width of the spokes. The 2015 MacBook Pro does extremely well for the inline changes, almost matching the M1 Max. But the new MacBook Pro is the clear winner here overall, significantly outperforming the Mac Mini for each type of change. And just from using it over the last week or two, I can testify that this has been an extremely noticeable and welcome improvement. Now we're going to play this in the simulator. In the first test, I'm letting the simulator start from cold, and in the second test, I'm leaving the simulator running, or hot, and rerunning the project. The 2015 MacBook Pro really struggles with this test from cold, but makes up a lot of ground when rerunning the project in a hot simulator. While the Mac Mini improves on the cold start time, it actually falls behind the 2015 Mac once again, with a time of 5.8 seconds in the second scenario. And we're really starting to see the M1 Max shine here, posting a time of 10.5 seconds from cold and a fantastic 2.6 seconds with the simulator open. This is less than half the time than the already impressive time taken by the 2015 MacBook Pro. At this point, I'd like to add that while running these tests, both the Mac Mini and the 2015 MacBook Pro were running quite loudly as the fans kept temperatures in check. The M1 Max, on the other hand, remained silent throughout all the tests we're looking at today. Now we're going to test another kind of view. This one, rather than being heavily path calculation based, is heavily style based with many modifiers including blurs and shadows. Once again, I'm going to be measuring the update lag when commenting out a section of code and comparing that with the time it takes to update the preview from an inline change. The times for the 2015 MacBook Pro are not much changed from the last run, although it did better for the inline change with a time of 1.2 seconds. The Mac Mini does better than last time and is able to beat the 2015 Mac for the hierarchy change test but can't match it in the inline test. The M1 Max improves on its time from the last view with an incredible 1 second update time for a hierarchy change and an awesome 0.5 seconds for an inline modification. That really is very impressive and once again makes a world of difference when coding in SwiftUI. Remember that these are punishing tests and that for most things the update times are going to be a lot shorter than this. Testing simulator runtimes for this view showed that the 2015 MacBook Pro didn't do much better than last time with a time of 18.6 seconds and actually did a little worse in the hot run. The Mac Mini did better but was actually a second slower than the last scenario we ran. It did significantly better in the hot simulator tests, this time beating the 2015 Mac. The M1 Max completely trounces the other two machines with cold and hot times of 9.2 and 1.7 seconds respectively. This is some serious speed on display here and again makes a world of difference when deciding if you can be bothered to test something in the actual simulator versus the preview. The answer is yes. Yes, you can. By now, I'm sure you're desperate to see some build times and to compare these, we're going to be building the Proving Ground project that I use to test every aspect of the Pure Swift UI package before releasing versions to the wild. It's not a massive project, but it's got its fair share of views, which is certainly enough to get an idea of how these systems compare. 
All builds were done without any optimizations, and I've set a system property that shows the build time in the status up here. I'll leave this in the description if you want to do the same. And we can clearly see here that the 2015 MacBook Pro running Xcode 12.4 takes a very long time to get this project built. It's all relative, I suppose, but comparing it to the Mac Mini running Xcode 13.1, the difference is night and day. The M1 Mac screams across the line, taking only 7.5 seconds. Absolutely wonderful. Let's do some unit testing. For version 3 of Pure Swift UI, I separated out the design elements into a standalone package called Pure Swift UI Design. We're going to use this new package to run some unit tests. There are hundreds of tests comprising over a thousand assertions, so it should give us something to work with. We're going to be running these tests using an iPhone 12 Pro Max as the device, meaning this is going to have to be spun up in the simulator in the background. So there's similar overhead here to running a project as normal in this simulator, but let's see how we get on. Results were recorded for cold and hot simulator runs. To obtain these results, I do a full build beforehand and then just measure the running of these tests. Once complete, if you go to the report navigator with command 9, you can click on the log here and it will show you the duration. You can also see that I've turned off coverage for these tests since there's an incompatibility when running coverage on M1 based Macs and I didn't want to skew the results. Overall, we see a similar pattern to the normal simulator tests in that the 2015 MacBook Pro suffers a bit getting it started, but holds its own against the Mac Mini even though ultimately it comes last in both categories. The M1 Max struggles a little getting the simulator running from cold here, so can't quite beat the Mac Mini for some reason. It does, however, cross the finish line first with an impressive 1.3 seconds to run tests in a hot simulator. So there you have it, some expected results, some disappointing, but they all had a story to tell. As you can see from the tests that really matter when it comes to productivity though, the M1 Max really does shine and you can feel it every time you use it for any kind of development. In my opinion, if you do decide to go for one of these things, you won't be disappointed. It really is an incredible machine and surpasses my beloved 2015 MacBook Pro in every way, which is really saying something. Having said that, it almost seems like the hardware is fighting a bit with the combination of Xcode and Monterey. Even though the M1 Max is quick, it seems like it's being held back somewhat, like it hasn't been fully unleashed, so to speak. Let's hope they address this in the next version, because I'm here for it. You'll be happy to know that browsing Stack Overflow on this thing is like lightning, so what could be more important for productivity and development than that? I hope this has managed your expectations somewhat and given you some insights into whether or not you should upgrade. If it did help, drop a like on the video, and if you want to see more of this kind of thing, it's not really what we do around here. We don't really do hardware comparisons. This is a coding channel. If you want to see some of that, please do consider subscribing. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, my excellent friends, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.